Right now, under current U.S. policy, elderly Medicaid recipients have to be on the verge of extreme poverty in order to receive benefits like long-term nursing care. Friend of the show, David Dayan, experienced the failure of our healthcare system himself and writes about it in his new piece, Universal Family Care Should Be Atop the Progressive Agenda. David shares the struggles his grandmother went through to receive basic care. An executive editor of the American Prospect, David Dayan, joins us now to lay out not only your own personal experience, but this is something that families across the country experience all the time. It's great to see you, David. Good to see you. So you talk about here and you make the case that family care, not just elder care, not just child care, but family care overall should really be a central issue in any progressive agenda. Just lay out the case. Let's make the argument. Yeah, absolutely. So we did a whole issue about this, and then you can find it at prospect.org slash family care. And, uh, you know, in looking at this system, it makes absolutely no sense right now. Uh, child care is hard to access. Uh, it's, it's at once expensive for uh, recipients and, and too uh, penurious for uh, uh, the, the providers. Uh, how can you have such a, a circumstance where it's too much money for people to access child care and too little money to live off it? Uh, that's because, you know, you, you can't put 30 people in a room, 30 children, small children in a room and, and have one instructor. Uh, it's a it's a very small ratio, and that's that's how you get that. Uh, we're one of three countries on Earth that doesn't have paid uh, sick leave. One of I believe thirteen that doesn't have paid parental leave. Uh, we, uh, you just mentioned that uh, uh, our long term care system is essentially not paid for. There are less than a dozen companies that sell long term care insurance, and the the, the the premiums are absolutely out of reach for most people. Uh, you have to draw down all of your assets to $2,000 or less in order to get Medicare to pick up long-term nursing care. Uh, the system doesn't work. And so we were thinking about what uh, can be done to make something more coherent. And the idea is a social insurance system, like we did with Social Security when we had elder poverty uh, at, at astronomical rates in the 1930s. Uh, one a payroll tax fund that covers all of these aspects of family care. Well, one of the things that you lay out here is that progressives have a lot of um, ideas for kind of these different pieces, right? There's, okay, there's paid leave, there's a plan for affordable or free universal child care. There may be plans, although to be honest with you, I haven't heard nearly enough conversation about what to do about elder care and the unbelievable, unconscionable situation that we have there. And so the idea you lay out would basically cover all of those issues. Just go into a little bit more detail about what you envision here. Yeah, I mean, I think those are all good ideas in general, uh, and I think they need to be put into a coherent whole. So we have a funding mechanism for all of this stuff and a single point of access so that families at all points on their sort of life cycle can access care. I mean, we have people who, uh, you know, have small children and who have parents who need care. We have uh, people who are, and you call that part of the sandwich generation. We have people with, uh, you know, relatives with disabilities who need care and who need to take time off to handle that. Uh, so, you know, one point of access that allows people to, uh, and, and, and in a way that's not tied to their job, by the way, uh, a portable kind of uh, bill, of a series of benefits that is uh, paid for through the entire society because care needs come up at, at random times and, uh, and, and frequently when you can least afford them. Uh, so if it's smoothed out over the entire population, so you can access this system and say, hey, I need time off, or uh, you know, we need to access a childcare system uh, uh, network, or we need access to long-term care. Uh, and, then, and it would be in one place. How could that system also ensure that people who are doing that care work, who have historically been, you know, dramatically underpaid, have been some of the lowest paid and most sort of, um, I don't know what the right word is, but the lowest paid and the treated with the least respect of any occupation in our history, largely because this was historically done by black and brown women. Um, how do we incorporate into that system a way of making sure that they are themselves getting paid and able to provide for their own families? 
Yeah, undervalued is how I'd explain it. That's and, the word. Uh, and, and what we need to do is, is uh, value them with a system that is fully funded, uh, that enables them to have a good job with good benefits, uh, rather than the situation that we have today. We have a, a number of stories about the plight of care workers uh, uh, who are, uh, you know, growing uh, older and are disproportionately, I mean, 93% of care, uh, child care workers are women, uh, over half of child care providers are minority owned businesses, uh, uh, disproportionately black and brown, as you say. Uh, uh, th these people need, uh, uh, they need the support for their own families and for their own jobs as much as they need support in the jobs that they, they create. Uh, and I think by virtue of uh, having a universal, fully funded system, uh, you will uh, uh, build into that system uh, dignity and a living wage for those people. And then finally, David, how do we end up in this place? Because you, um, you have an interesting passage here about, look, the way we used to handle this is basically by forcing women to stay home and deal with everything. Now that right. you essentially have to have two income earners in the household, and of course, many women want to work and be in the workplace, um, we've evolved the system. We, we've never adjusted to the dramatically changed reality for most American families. That's absolutely right. And, uh, you know, we, we have a piece by Kimberly Morgan as part of the package at prospect.org slash family care about the missed opportunities here. We almost had a universal child care system in 1970 and Richard Nixon vetoed it. Uh, we had, as part of the Affordable Care Act, uh, a, a pr public long term insurance care system called the Class Act. And uh, the Obama administration deemed it uh, not not affordable and, and canceled the system, and it was eventually repealed. Uh, every step along the way, we have decided not to value this part of the system, which is so core. I mean, these are, as as our uh, friend Ai Jen Poo describes, job enabling jobs. Uh, uh, if if your family is cared for, you can go out into the workforce, and if you can't. Uh, you know, you, you end up having someone stay at home and usually it's the woman. Women's labor force participation rates are, are, are you know, essentially tied to the ability to access care. And, and we haven't adjusted the system, as you said. Uh, we haven't given families the freedom of the ability to choose. Uh, if if, if a, a someone wants to stay home and be a caregiver, uh, that that they are taken care of in terms of, you know, because as caregivers, they would be part of this system as well in terms of being compensated uh, at some level. Uh, we haven't given families the freedom to sort of set that course. We've, we've instead said, you're on your own. We're throwing you in the deep end. Uh, handle your children, handle your parents, uh, handle, uh, you know, whatever comes at you. Uh, and we're not going to even guarantee sick leave if you're sick or if you have to care for somebody. We're not going to guarantee you uh, parental leave or family leave. Uh, this is this is wrong. This is this is a, a serious challenge. And the pandemic has shown it. Right. I mean, the pandemic has shown yeah. how big a challenge this is. Yeah. And by the way, I know you frame this as a progressive issue, which it is, but it's also an overwhelmingly popular issue. Um, PRRI just did new polling. I think it's 83 percent of Americans support universal affordable child care, including an overwhelming majority of Republicans. So you have the public support there. We've just got to have the political will to get it done. David, thank you so much. Um, people should check out the issue. Great work on this. Thank you so much. Next on Rising, the Trump campaign discusses their strategy ahead of the final presidential debate on Thursday when Rising returns.